question, who were the spirits in prison which are mentioned in the Bible? Because uh, uh, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 3.18, For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us unto God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Now look at this. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, uh -huh. which sometimes were disobedient when, uh, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. The long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. They were disobedient. Look at those keywords. Huh? While the ark was uh, preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. So that time is talking about the time of Noah, is when we see this whole story of the spirits in prison. Okay? Now, we have to understand that the spirits in prisons are mentioned in the context of what Jesus did <clears throat> in the time between his death and his resurrection. Okay? Because what you have just read, that he was put to death in the body but made alive by the spirit. After being made alive, he was made and, uh, and uh, made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits. To those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. Now, not something. That Jesus' body was dead and awaiting resurrection, but he was spiritually alive during the time uh, when all this is being spoken. That his body was in the grave, but his spirit was alive doing something. Okay? I, I, I don't know if you understand this. Now, where was Jesus for three days between his death and resurrection? You have to ask yourself. And uh, if you want to understand about these uh, spirits, it's uh, good you come to understand that, uh, you know, the Bible says we are alive in Christ. So even in our death, we are still alive. And this is a proof that for sure we are alive if we are in Christ. Because Jesus died literally on the cross, but his spirit was alive. And he was doing some things, which I'm going to show you here, which prove that the Bible is very true, saying that we are alive. Because Jesus himself is our example, showing us that he was alive, even at his death. He was still working and doing things. And remember, the Bible says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So immediately you're present with the Lord. What are you doing? Are you going to be dead there? No, you'll be doing things, and you'll be alive there. But those who are dead, not in Christ, then they are dead. They are waiting for judgment, nothing else. Okay? So we know, we know three things. Uh, that is for sure about the spirits, these, these spirits which are mentioned. That uh, they are incorporeal, that they are in prisons, and their sin was committed before the flood. Before the flood of Noah. Okay? Now, this verse that we have just read, this verse that we have just read also seems to indicate that Jesus visited the place of their captivity. And he made an announcement to them. He visited these spirits and made some announcement to them. I'm just putting this picture here uh, to, to, just to show that, uh, you know, it's somewhere in a prison. Okay? These are those exact spirits that have been subject of some speculation over the years. People have always act who are these spirits who exactly are these spirits now let's take a view that the spirits in these prisons are the fallen angels or demons we take that view this is the most common view let's let's take that view now the spirits in prisons cannot be holy angels okay they can't be holy angels the ones who have visited and uh, why they cannot be holy angels because they have not sinned and are not imprisoned. The only angels, they are not imprisoned by anyone. It is clear that all the demons, uh, it is clear that not all demons, sorry, are imprisoned. For the New Testament gives many examples of demonic activities on earth. Okay? There are so many demonic activities that we hear on earth. I don't know, demons doing this, demon possessing people. So not all of them are possessed. That one you have to understand. Okay? It is clear about that. 
So, the spirits in prisons must be a select group of demons who, unlike their demonic allies, are held captives. Now, what might be the reason for these demons being held captive unlike the others? What might be the reason? You remember what the Bible says in the book of Jude 1.6? This might be the reason, Jude Jude 1, uh, 6. Look at this story. This is so clear and it will help us to understand this story. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, uh -huh, but left their own habitation. Habitation where? Probably in heaven or uh, some place where they were. I don't know. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Huh. Let's see in verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, like manner, giving ex uh, themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. So there's something which these demons, these spirits did. They went after some strange flesh. And they are set forth, for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal life. Hmm. Now when you look at this, these demons do you remember in genesis <clears throat> in genesis in genesis there are some fallen angels which mated with the the daughters of men and the bible explains all about this now these ones could be those spirits because the bible records in genesis it records in genesis 6 1 Genesis 6, 1, about this specific story. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, the sons of God, the sons of God. Uh -huh. Now, when you look at this, I'm going to explain to you about the sons of God in just a bit. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So, they took wives of the daughters of men, sons of God and daughters of men. This one doesn't mean a Christian because how do you become a son of God? How do you become a child of God? Through believing in Jesus. Back in those days, there was nothing like believing in Jesus because Jesus had not even come. There were other rules and other laws. So, that time it was the people of God, the chosen, uh, you know, Israel later on when we, Ab Abraham comes in. But this is the time of Noah. Even Abraham has not, you know, has not come in the picture. The nation of Israel not in the picture. Jesus not in the picture. So who are these sons of God? Sons of God. It basically means some people who are created by God. And of course, I don't want to take much time because it's also spoken in the book of Job that when the foundations of, uh, of the world were, were set by God, the sons of God shouted for joy. So if the foundations of heaven, or of the world, are being set and the sons of God are shouting, then it means those must have been uh, 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 creatures created by God before even the world was made. So that's fallen angels. Are you, seeing, are you connecting the dots now? These are the fallen angels. Now, after the daughters of men, okay, after the daughters of men were born, that is the children uh, born in that time of Noah, they saw that they were fair and they took wives of all which they chose. So they went after strange flesh. Are you seeing this one? They went after strange flesh. flesh. And the Bible explains that. Are you seeing the point here? So if the sons of God were the fallen angels, then the scene of Genesis 6 involved angels leaving the place where they belonged in, in an act of disobedience before the flood. There's a possibility they left the second heaven where we hear that, uh, you know, the Bible says uh, we, f we wrestle not uh, flesh and blood, but against the principalities in high places, in the heavens. So there's the second heaven, you see, the earth is the first heaven. Then we have the second heaven where the spirits and all those kind of things, they, they stay there. And then we have the heaven of God. So it means they left the first estate, the, the, the second heaven where they are, they, they are supposed to be. 
and came to the earth and they started mating with the daughters of men. Are you seeing this point? So that is a disobedience uh, to God. After also another disobedience of, of course, uh, you know, uh, 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 being deceived by Satan and all of them going, you know, uh, from the glory of God. So now that is sin number two <laughs> of what they did. And this one corresponds to exactly what the Apostle Peter mentions in 1 Peter 3.19, which, which, which you have just read. So it could be that the demons who cohabited with hum human women were imprisoned by God to prevent them from repeating the same sin and to discourage other demons from trying to do the same. Okay? So I think this is exactly why they were held captives in hell and they were chained there and others are still uh, roaming those who did not participate in this kind of sin. Now, according to 1 Peter 3.19, we have to understand that Jesus made a proclamation to these spirits in prison, okay? And uh, the Greek word which is translated from that is uh, he preached or basically means to publicly declare or to herald, okay? If the spirits are demons, then Peter says that Jesus went to the abyss and proclaimed his victory to the fallen angels imprisoned there. They had lost and he had won. The cross triumphed over all evil. Okay? Like the Bible tells us that the cross has triumphed over all evil. Okay? Colossians 2 verse 15. See what the Bible says here. It says, And having spoiled principalities and power, he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. Hmm. Now, he is giving them a show openly, triumphing over them. Are you seeing this one? And he has spoiled his principalities and powers. Is he talking about the same, the same beings? You see, we have to understand another view of uh, the identity of the spirits in prison. Probably is that they are... You know, another view that people have, forget the, the demons, is that uh, people have a view that uh, these are human spirits of those who perished in the flood of Noah's day. But uh, you have to understand, as for Christ preaching to them, there may be, if this can be the concept, then there may be two interpretations. And the first interpretation is uh, that Jesus probably preached to them figuratively and through Noah while they were still in the flesh. Remember, Noah was a preacher of righteousness and righteousness came by Christ. <laughs> Do you see the point? Righteousness came by Christ. And if Noah was a preacher of righteousness, then probably Jesus preached to them through Noah. Are you, are you seeing the point? While still they were in the flesh. But now he's talking about them in a, in a spiritual manner. Let, let <clears throat> okay, I will go back to that verse again and, and, and show you something here. I want to show you so that you can see the picture. First Peter uh, 3.19. First Peter 3.19. See this. Which, were also, which also he went and preached unto the spirits in the prisons, which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. You see? The long-suffering of God. What is that? The grace of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein a few, that is, eight souls were saved. So you see, the grace of God was working through Noah, who was a preacher of righteousness? Now, could these people have been preached by Jesus himself through Noah and they refused? That is a one understanding probably. And uh, the other interpretation also, if it were those people in that time, it is that Christ preached to them literally between his death and resurrection. The people who were there in the time of Noah, those who were you know, uh, 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 who are in uh, hell, the time of Noah. But according to both interpretations, the spirits 
uh, the spirits are called such because they were in a spiritual condition when Peter wrote. And they were no longer in the flesh, but they lived, and also they lived in Hades. So we have to understand. So it can be, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it can be maybe these are the people who are in the time of Noah, the people who disobeyed God and, uh, you know, they were killed by the flood. Jesus went to preach to them in Hades. Or these are the fallen angels. The fallen angels. So whichever way you interpret, uh, it will all depend with how the Spirit guides you, the Spirit of God guides you. But at least that's a, that's how I understand. And that, that's how uh, I've just left it open like that so that you can do your own uh, much more research. So anyway, guys, if you're not saved, I always like to leave you with the gospel. Please believe the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again, as is written in the scriptures. And he did this all for us. So that whosoever will believe that Jesus did this for him, then he will be saved. All that you need to do is just to confess to him what you have believed. You tell him, Jesus, I believe that you died you, uh, for my sins. You were buried and rose again. And all this was to save me and separate me from uh, the, the, the death. And once you confess to Christ and you tell him exactly what you have believed, if you have really believed from your heart, then you are saved. And uh, no evil will come upon you. So I hope this has been a blessing. You have been able to understand uh, uh, some points. And I hope it will even help you to understand the Bible much more. If you have any question that you may need me to answer, please type it in the comments below and I'll be able to uh, uh, do a, a study about it and uh, we can all be edified. If you like this video, please this, uh, give it a thumbs up and also you can share to your friends so that they can be able to uh, learn even. And also subscribe and uh, uh, hit the notification button so that you can be notified whenever you post a new video. And uh, God bless you and have a good, good time.